bright duty every student matters now let us carry forward our understanding and application of molecular mass in mole concept now what happens for instance if i have a molecular equation a formula and a chemical equation suppose i write the chemical equation of hydrogen reacting with oxygen to give water molecule okay now in this case we see that one molecule of hydrogen reacting with one molecule of oxygen to give one molecule of water now this is not a balanced equation so what i do i balance this equation so from this chemical equation we interpret that the first interpretation is one molecule of hydrogen reacts with one molecule of oxygen to give two molecules this is not one molecule this is two molecule so two molecule of hydrogen reacts with one molecule of oxygen to give two molecule of water or in other words if i write it in terms of molecular mass then it will be 2 into all right plus 16 into 2 to give 2 into 2 into 1 plus 16 which is equal to 4 plus 32 that is 2 18 grams gives you 36 grams of water now this clearly amplifies the law of conservation of mass but basic highlight is not to understand the law of conservation of mass here we are trying to understand the molecular mass or the application of numbers so here we see that 4 gram of oxygen is reacting with is reacting with how many grams 32 grams of oxygen all right so we find that 4 grams of hydrogen is reacting with 32 grams of oxygen and then to give you a total of 36 grams of water now a chemical equation gives us all these information it gives us the number of molecules that are involved in the chemical reaction at the same time it also tells us the molecular masses that are involved in a chemical reaction so in order to justify more about it a new term has been coined which is known as mole and one mole is the number of species now that species can be atoms it can be molecules it can be ions it can be any particles any particles any number of particles so one mole is the number of species present in the molecular mass of the substance now here the basic idea is the basic explanation is that if we take one mole of any substance it is equivalent to the molecular mass of the substance that is if mole is represented by n then n will be equal to m by m that is m is the given mass and m it is the given mass and m is the molecular mass okay so in other words we can say that one mole of a substance is equal to the molecular mass of the 
substance. Okay. If I take an example of hydrogen, then one mole of hydrogen molecule is equal to the molecular mass of hydrogen. Or if I take one mole of oxygen, then it is molecular mass of oxygen and so on and so forth. So you see the relation that one mole of a substance is equal to the molecular mass of the substance. Now it was also seen that each of this mole is associated with a particular number of particles. That means one mole is of any substance will contain 6.022 into 10 to the power 23 number of particles. This is a constant term. Alright. So it was understood that one mole of any substance, whether it is a molecule of an element or a molecule of a compound of any species will contain this many number of particles and we call it as Avogadro's number and this Avogadro's number is a constant term. So we have got two relations. One relation is that one mole of a substance is equal to the molecular mass of the substance whereas one mole of any substance is also equal to the fixed Avogadro's number of particles. So we can generalize these two equations together. How can we do it? This means that one mole of, of any substance, now remember this one mole of any substance can be number of atoms, molecules, it can be ions, it can be any particle, anything is equal to, what did we find out in the previous one? That it is equal to the molecular mass of the substance. That is, it is equal to the molecular mass, mass of the substance. Now, what is this molecular mass of the substance? It can again be that of atoms, molecules, ions or any other particles. Now this two relation is already known to us and we also know that one mole of a substance is equal to the Avogadro's number. That means which is equal to 6.022 into 10 to the power 23 number of substances. So we have come to an end conclusion and we have arrived to a basic formula and we call this formula to be applicable in mole concept. And what is mole? It means the number of particles, the number of species of any substance, whether it is an atom or number of molecules or the number of ions or the number of particles as a whole is equal to the molecular mass of the substance. So either it is the atomic mass of the substance or the molecular mass of the molecule. I hope this is clear to you. Now we can also write it in terms of chemical formula. One relation says that N is equal to M by M. This is the first part whereas there is another relation which says that N is equal to N by N naught which is also known as the Avogadro's number. So, if m is the given mass, so what is m? Small m is the given mass. This is capital M is the molecular mass which is a constant for a particular substance, molecular mass. m is the number of particles, either the number of atoms or the number of molecules 
and n not is or n zero is the Avogadro's Avogadro's number, which is a fixed quantity. So if we so we have got two relations, n is equal to and what is n? Yes, n is the number of moles. So the number of moles is equal to the given mass by the mole. Molecular mass, but its number of moles is also equal to the number of particles by Avogadro's number. So we can sum these two together and write down n is equal to m by capital M, which is equal to n by n naught. All right. Now using this relation, we will be able to solve lot of numericals. Okay. Now. Let me once again explain you what is all about. In mole concept, we see from chemical equation, we find out, we had seen that in a chemical equation, you tend to know the number of molecules which are involved in a chemical reaction. To make the study easier, we had introduced a top, a number which is known as one mole, and one mole is the number of species. Of any substance present in the present in that particular molecular mass of the substance. All right. So if I have one mole of hydrogen, that means one mole of hydrogen will con will be present in two grams of in two grams of the substance. And remember one important thing is that when we are writing the molecular mass, we because we are expressing now it in grams, so we also term it as the molar mass. So this is an inclusion that every time you may not be referring it as molecular mass, but we will be referring it as molar mass as well. Molar mass means molecular mass expressed in grams, or the atomic mass expressed in grams. Okay, so either gram molecular mass or gram atomic mass which is expressed in grams. As we had seen in the atomic mass unit, we expressed the numbers in U, in unified unit. In this case, we will be expressing it in grams to make our calculations easier and understandable. Okay. So, this, form, this concept is clear. So, 1 mole is equal to m by m. We also saw that one mole of any substance is equal to the molecular mass of the substance or in other words the molar mass of the substance. All right. So these both terms means the same whereas one mole of any substance is equal to the Avogadro's number of particles. In this case it means that if I have one mole of hydrogen then it will definitely contain 6.022 into 10 to the power 23 number of hydrogen molecules. So if I take 1 mole of hydrogen molecule, then it will contain 6.022 into 10 to the power 23 number of hydrogen molecules. This is what it means. So when we bring these two relations together, we can generalize it as one mole of any substance is equal to the mole molecular mass or molar mass, molar mass of the substance which is equal to the constant Avogadro's number. All right. If we put it in formula, we see that n is equal to m by m where n is the number of moles, m is the given mass and m is the molecular mass or the molar mass. In the second relation, the number of mole is equal to the number of particles by Avogadro's number. So, we can combine these two relations and come to a general chemical formula, uh, general formula that is n is equal to m by m equal to capital N by n naught. Now, taking this into consideration, we will be solving some numericals which is of high importance. Now, before we start with the explanation and uh, before we proceed with solving of numericals, one thing you need to make yourself very clear that you need to understand this relation properly. 
because there are three entities which are given. We have number of moles, molar mass and the Vegetrose number. So these are three quantities. So in case two quantities are given, then you will be able to find out the third entity. Alright, so taking all this into account, we will be solving some numericals. And the for calculating the molar masses, the atomic mass will be given, will be provided to you. The normal, the very common ones should be learned by now. You should know them properly. And those which are not very common, which are not common in use, they will be provided to you in the numerical sector.